Fancy, I'm not sitting here smoking a Cohiba while Andy's doing all the talking. That's not how it's going. Andy covering the boxes that he covered for the majority of their contest in ring B, including the 2016 Olympic silver medalist, Sofian Umaha. Well, here he comes. He's had a good competition, Umaha, beating Ham of Korea, Tanko of Armenia, and then Tolteyev of Kazakhstan. Very, very experienced gold medalist in Hamburg four years ago. Silver medalist at the Olympics the year before that in Rio and got to Tokyo, but 63 kilos didn't really suit him. He's been a, a lightweight, a 60 kilo fighter for forever, really. So the increased weight at 63, I don't think helped him against the likes of Kishon Davis, who beat him at the Olympics. So he'll be delighted to be back in his, in his natural home, if you like, his natural habitat. And this is Alexi De La Cruz, who I've not seen before. He emerged for his first fight against Nicholas Okoth. He got past him. Got past Murat Yildirim, Abdurrahman Yokubov, and Arslan Katayev. He's tall, he's lean, he's got a nice wide split stance, keeps those hands low, pops them up from the waist. Good upper body movement as well. So I've been looking forward to this. I like Umaha watching him down the years. He's just a really good ambassador for the sport. Always a smile on his face. Final instructions here from the from the referee. And these two sent back to their corners. Umahar in red, just bouncing on the balls of his feet there. De La Cruz coming forward in the blue. De La Cruz out of the southpaw stance. Umaha boxing orthodox. And these two have both got nice balance. And he'll look to pop out that jab. Just flip that jab up from the waist. Looking for the left-hand counter. There, De La Cruz. Umaha just comes in with that front foot, just having a little bit of a look. De La Cruz with the jab, which I think that time did land, but was caught on the gloves the second time around. Umaha just dipping underneath that right hand, spins around off the front foot. Short left hand, tiny little short left hand. There from Umaha, which did land, committing with the feet there, De La Cruz stepping in, landed to the body with the left hand, but then just got caught by the right hand counter. This is this is good stuff. This is a good fight. Little combination there from Umaha. You look at that wide split stance there of De La Cruz. That's what allows him to step in there and really look for that left to the body. But he's effective as well at just pulling that weight back and getting out of range. Umaha is just as adept at that kind of thing. Heading up towards the, the midway point of the first round. Not an awful lot has been landed clean. Umaha has snuck through with, with two or three, but this is a good match. Left to the body there from De La Cruz. Always just keeping that head on the move there, Umaha. Lost his balance a little bit there, but just kept going forward and landed the right into the body. Just pulls his head back slightly there, Umaha. What he does really well is he offers you that head a little bit. He leans in with that head slightly, but the balance is between the feet. So he's just hinging forward at the waist, making you think that he's in range. And then he'll just pull that head back, make you fall short and try and counter. Jab comes in there from De La Cruz. Fell short, but then he threw the combination off the back of it. Quick hand speed there from the fighter from the Dominican Republic. Just hanging on that back foot a little bit. Right hand landed up top. It's been Umaha who's held the centre of the ring for the most part in this fight so far. And in rounds where it's very, very tight and it's difficult to separate them on scoring blows, that can matter. De La Cruz with a left hand, I think, got through to the body. Umaha trying to measure for the right himself with that, that lead left. He's had the kind of round here, Umaha, where he's always looked like he's about to pull the trigger and maybe land something, but it just hasn't quite happened for him. De La Cruz on the outside with a few long lefts to the body. Maybe has just sneaked that one, but very little to pick, really. Two boxers who possess terrific speed. Facing off in this semi-final. Both men enjoying success, but the more solid punches particularly to the body, came from the man 
in blue, but it's a 4-1 split in favor of Umaha. Only the judge from Guatemala preferring the bigger backhand and coiled by De La Cruz. The rest of the scoring judges preferring the work of the man in red. And again, the reflex as evidenced during that where neither man was able to find a range, but there was a scoring single from Umaha. And I think both boxers know that in a contest such as this, where similar physically, long arms, broad shoulders, slim waist, any mistake is likely to be counted immediately and capitalized upon by the opponents. The scoring punch output not terrifically high, but the 2017 world champion Umaha taking it for four of the five scoring judges. I think he's slightly unlucky there, Umaha, but as I said, he was more on the front foot and judges do like that sometimes. It's always about who lands the, the more numerous scoring blows, the better blows delivered with a knuckle part of the glove to the torso, the front or the side of the head. That's what it's all about. You'll see judges warn fighters for slapping, for delivering punches with the inside of the glove because they are not scoring blows. So into the start of the second round, Umaha of France with his nose in front after the first round he's in red de la cruz of dominican republic in the blue it'll be interesting to see how he goes about this round because i think he will have felt that he did enough to to win that first round or do better in that first round than he did with the judges is he going to change or is he going to stick and trust his method from what i've seen of him i think he'll stick with his method and he is so far because that is how he fights and it's brought him a lot of success in the competition up until this point but he will probably feel that he needs to let his hands go a little bit more. Umaha again, just on the prowl. Just tapping with that lead hand. In and out slightly with the front foot. De La Cruz comes forward off the ropes. Umaha with that head on the move. De La Cruz is, is happy though, he's comfortable hanging on that back foot. It's not really the case that he's being backed up Big difference between a fighter being backed up and voluntarily giving that ground and boxing around the corners, around the periphery, because that's that's kind of where they prefer it. That's where they like to be. That's that's what this is with with De La Cruz. But as mentioned, it's not the best look for the judges at times. You do need to land off that back foot and maybe land a bit more than you necessarily should have to, strictly speaking to get the round win. It's an age-old debate in boxing in all codes. Left hand there from De La Cruz was slightly short. And again there, and this second round, two minutes in, not much clean landed by either one. Left hand gets through there from, from De La Cruz. It's pretty similar to the first round, this. De La Cruz just lets his hands go on the inside a little bit more. Umaha, for most of the fight, he's, he's kind of provided what you might describe as a sort of latent threat, a kind of pregnant threat. There seems to be something to come, but it's just not quite, it's not quite happening. Right to the body from Umaha, didn't get there, and he was countered there with a left from, from De La Cruz. And I'm always slightly reluctant to do this because for me, again, on, on blows landed here, I think De La Cruz has, has edged this, but given what we saw with the scoring in the first round, Ron, when those scores come up, I'm half expecting to see it go to Umaha. Well, De La Cruz landed the more solid shots, particularly from his backhand. There was not one notable left cross to the head. Another bolo shot whipped into the body. Umaha always on the front foot, looking to capitalize on his man, but he's taken it on a 4-1 split once again, has Umaha. So a different distribution of scores. Excuse me, we've got 20 points to 18 on all five scoring cards, but only the judge from Guatemala preferring the work of De La Cruz. Now, you've seen him in ring B throughout. Unless he changes his tenor, he's not going to find the 10-8 round that he needs boxing as he prefers to on the back foot and on the periphery of the boxing ring. So he's in the realm of needing a knockout, a stoppage, or he's going to have to change something here. And if he does change something, and attempts to press against a speedy punch picker like Umaha, that could play into the Frenchman's hands. Difficult position De La Cruz finds himself in with three minutes to go. Absolutely, absolutely. You've summed that up perfectly, really, because he is a back foot fighter. He hangs on that back foot. He's got that split stance, and he looks to try and count the punch. He'll step it every now and again, as he, as he did there. And, and this is how he does it, and it's how he's won his fight so far. And I think he's unlucky 
to be four down on to be down on four cards by by two points heading into this into this final round. I do think it's the front foot dynamic that has been provided by Umaha, which has seen him dominate the scoring. Been difficult to pick between the two of them in terms of punches landed. I think De La Cruz has, has had the edge on, on, on that front in those opening two. So I think what he could have hoped for justifiably would be that this would be live going into the into the final round, that, that he wouldn't have the deficit that he's got. But that's where we are and it's been very close. Umaha just landing a, a right hand there as Dela Cruz, for the first time really, just looked to kind of pick up his feet and pursue his man across the ring. But now he's more reverted to type, just flicking that jab from the waist. Umaha just dips those knees, drops his height a little bit, looks to try and come in with a, a single right. Didn't land, so he brought it back nice and quick. And there again, as I say, he just leans in with the head. He's standing quite square there, Umaha. He's got the hands down. He's offering you that head a little bit. He's got good reflexes. He's a very good fighter, as the results have proved over the years. Left hand there from Dela Cruz. Just slips over the shoulder of Umaha, who extends that right hand and managed to reach the chest. Dela Cruz with busy feet, but again, just popping the jab off from the waist into the final minute. And Umaha is, is cruising really here now because there's absolutely no way that Dela Cruz is going to score 10-8 in this round. It's just not, it's just not going to happen. Umaha with quite a lot of posturing in this in this final round. But again, he's He's got onto the front foot. He's taken that little bit of space from De La Cruz. He's, he's looked like he's about to pull the trigger. He's looked capable every second of this fight of, of doing something really telling, but at no point has it actually happened. And that's a skill in itself to kind of, to look like the boss in there without doing all that much punching into the final 20 seconds. So it's going to be Umaha who goes through and as we know, he will be up against Abdul Malik Kalakov of Uzbekistan, who went through via a walkover. Well, there goes the bell and Umar is going to go through there. Super confident as he walks back to the corner because he'll know what the scoring was through the first couple of rounds. He's a clever fighter, isn't he? Really, really clever fighter for all the, the reasons that I outlined there. It, it is always impressive when you see someone who manages to to win a round or not exactly dominate, but but look like they're they're on the cusp of of delivering something because it just it occupies their opponent. If you can occupy your opponent without really punching that much or even seeming to do that much and as I said, that is, that is a skill in itself. So Umaha goes through. We knew that that was going to be the case with the scores as they were before the start of that third and final round. Four scorecards in his favour. De La Cruz gets it with one of the judges, the Guatemalan judge, but everybody else went for Umaha. Three of them by three rounds to nil. The other one by two rounds to one. And as I said at the top, I think the the fact that he's able to box, box at 60 again, Ron, I think that's, that's big for him, isn't it? Because 63 kilos in the Olympics, you, you cover that tournament, it's, it's too big for him. He's been 60 kilos forever, hasn't he? And that's, that's, it's great for him that he can get back there. Absolutely. 13 weight classes available here at this edition of the World Championship. 60 kilogram, the classic lightweight category included. And Umaha set his stall out early. Make no mistake, La Cruz always in the contest. 
But the scoring of the first round was instructive. La Cruz couldn't adjust. And then when he definitely needed to adjust because he was running out of time, wasn't able to do so effectively enough. And it's Sofahan Umaha through to another World Championship final in search of his second gold to add to the one that he won in Hamburg four years ago. Good display from him.